This morning I'd like for you to uh, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter number one. Uh, we are taking a little break from the book of Romans. We will resume that and, uh, Lord willing, finish that book uh, in uh, the new year. Uh, hopefully starting again the second uh, of Sunday of January. But uh, we this morning, I uh, want to talk to you about a right Christmas. Uh, as I was uh, thinking and preparing of this for uh, several weeks, uh, the Lord seemed to really impress me with the fact that uh, we just need to get back to the basics. Have you ever noticed it's just a part of human nature? It, it's a part of our makeup. Whatever we get involved with, with as obvious and simple and plain as it may begin, with time it becomes more complicated. I think we've done that with Christmas. Uh, the secular world, I mean, you notice they start early every year and uh, uh, the Christmas gifts are becoming more complicated. Uh, Chris, kids are getting Christmas gifts now that when we were kids, we wouldn't know what to do with that, but they do. Uh, and uh, everything is just becoming more complicated, and our world is becoming more complicated, and, and we've done that with Christmas. And uh, the churches that are large enough to have television ministries, it seems like every year they need to try a little bigger and better than the year before. And the Lord really just touched my heart that I just want to talk to you. I just want to bring you a message on uh, a right Christmas. And it doesn't have anything to do with how much you get or give uh, or how fancy. Uh, Christmas is in you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heart for the Lord Jesus Christ. My verse is one I've used many times through the years, Matthew 121. And she, Mary, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, Savior, for he shall save his people from their Sins. What does Christmas mean to you? What are you doing this Christmas? I might add, uh, what are you doing that you shouldn't be doing, or what are you not doing that you ought to be doing? How are you planning on celebrating? Well, I know that you made a right decision by being in the house of the Lord to worship and celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. I commend you for that. Most of us are getting our cup full on television about what you ought to do and what you ought to give. For some people, Christmas time is just really hard work, the stores. Of course, for some, it's a visit home. To some, it means nothing. I remember as a child being so poor, we didn't have a Christmas. That's back then you could do that. We weren't breaking the law. My dad and I went to a state park and cut a little tree. And we made some, my mother made some paper, whatever, and put on the tree, and that was it. That's right after we first came to America. We didn't do anything. Christmas is in here. It's not how big the tree is. It's not how many are under the gift, under the tree. And of course, to some, Christmas is a sad time. Some of you have lost loved ones this week, this year. Some of you are fighting illnesses. To some, it's, it's sad. Uh, and of course, uh, what in our nation's 
history and started out as holy days had become holidays and uh, that means revelry. Party, drink, indulge. I hope that none of you do that. I hope you celebrate Christmas with conviction that you are believers and that involves a certain lifestyle. So for a Christian, it's about faith in Christ. It's hope, a sure hope in the coming of Christ. It is a expressing our love first to Christ and to our families and if possible to others. For us Christmas is Christ in you, the hope of glory. For us it is joy to the world, for unto us is born a Savior, Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me uh, share with you some simple biblical principles to live by for this week. Number one, keep Christ Jesus center in everything you do this week. Yeah. Don't leave him out. Not only just don't leave him out, but keep him center. He is the reason for the season. You remember the sad statement made about the innkeeper in Luke 2.7? There was no room for them in the inn. Think of what that innkeeper and his family missed. So many today just don't make room for Jesus Christ. They don't want Him in their lives. They don't want Him in their homes. We're expelling Him out of every segment of our public life and look at the consequences of those kind of bad decisions. Are you making room for Jesus Christ in your life this week? You see, Acts 2.41 says just the opposite of no room for them in the end. It says, they that gladly received the Lord. If you have gladly received the Lord, then you can have a good week. Regardless of what's under the tree. If nothing is under the tree... Whether it's a big ham dinner or a cold bologna sandwich, you've got it here. You're richer than the richest men who will celebrate Christmas with all the extravagance that can be celebrated. Yet their heart is empty and sad. Keep Christ centered. Do remember, he said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I will come in and we will fellowship together. The richest celebration without Jesus is poorer than the poorest celebration where Jesus is there. Amen? Remember that. And then I, I, I want to, secondly, I want to remind us that um, to this morning we have come together. And, and, and when you come together with your families this week, it is to worship the Lord. Worship. Bowing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Adoring the Lord Jesus Christ. Acknowledging what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us and for our lives. Uh, I want you to look at something. You know, I was in Luke chapter 2 with the young people and the children a little while ago. There's something there I want you to see. In Luke chapter 2, verse 13. Luke chapter 2, verse 13. And suddenly there were with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. And saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Good will to men. A right Christian.
Christmas for a Christian, for a Christian home, a home where there are believers, whether it's one or many, a right Christmas must include worship. Think of who he is, the Son of God. Think of what he did. He left heaven. He came to earth. He died. He paid for our sins. Think of where he is now. He's not in a grave. He's not out of that tree. He is at he in heaven at the right hand of God being worshipped by the myriad of angels. Think Amen. of what you are because of Him. You're a believer. You have been delivered from your sin. He has given you a meaningful life. Uh, your eternity has been destined. Uh, and think of where you shall be one day. I, I want you to turn to uh, Revelation chapter number 5. Revelation chapter number 5. I want you to look at verse number 12 and 13. Worship. Worship this week. Revelation 5, 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever and ever. Worship. And may I remind us all, may I remind you, on Christmas, whether you celebrate Christmas Eve, whether you celebrate Christmas morning, it doesn't matter. Somebody in your home, get down the Bible. Read the Christmas stories. I read it this morning. Read it to your children. Read it to your loved ones. As a family, read it. And then the man of the house or the lady of the house or some believer pray and praise and thank God. That is how a believer celebrates Christmas. We worship our God. We honor Him. We laud Him. We love Him. And we express so. Then this one is rather obvious, but I need to put it in a different light than the world puts it. Christmas includes... The grace of giving. The grace of giving. Matthew 2, 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child, Mary and his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened the treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Christmas and giving are synonymous. If we're not careful, we give to everybody except Christ. It's not your birthday, unless you were born that time. It's Christ's birthday we're celebrating. Have you prepared a gift for Christ? Well, how can I do that? He's in heaven. Well, when you serve others, when you serve others, other believers, when you serve uh, through the church, you're really serving the Lord. Because he said, when you've done something for the least, you have done it for me. Amen. Have you thought, have you given any thought to what can you do for someone this week in the name and for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ? That's why I recommend it to you. Take some of these with you when you leave today. Put them in your Christmas gifts. Have you considered your neighbors? Do they need anything? Do you know anybody that's not going to have a good Christmas? Have you thought about, if nothing else, have you thought about writing an extra check and put on their for missions or for the bishops? or for the two sisters, uh, or, or whoever, and giving it to uh, uh, Brother uh, Tuttle to, to, to send to missionaries. 
Christmas and giving are synonymous. But what do we owe Christ? Well, first of all, we need to give ourselves. If He does not have us, nothing else means anything. It's just activity. Have you given yourself to Christ? Lord, I'm yours. I do with me whatever you wish. Then we give the Lord our time. I have not really experienced that in my pastorate here in this church, but most churches will tell you uh, that around holiday times, including Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, and New Year, church attendance goes down when it ought to go up. <laughs> we give our time. We give our talents. What can you do for the honor of Christ? And of course, we give our money. With all our ills, with all our problems, with all the things that are not going right in our nation, we're still the most prosperous nation in human history. Have you helped anybody, any cause, as a part of your regular Christmas? to help your fellow man for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know we have plenty of examples in the Bible. God did. For God so loved the world that He did what? He gave His only begotten Son. Christ did. Ephesians 5.2 who shed His own blood for us. And we should. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Christmas is about giving. Don't leave out Christ mm -hmm. in your giving. And then let me tell you one more thing. Christmas time is a time when when it's easier than any other time of the year to tell others about your Lord and your Savior. People are more conscious, more receptive. The ground is uh, easier to plow for Christ this time of year. Uh, back over to Luke. Luke. Chapter number 2, verse 10 and 11. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, unto all you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And verse 17. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them. This is a good time to tell somebody you're a Christian. This is a good time to present someone a Bible. Are you, have you thought about giving a Bible to somebody this year at Christmas? Have you thought of sharing a track with someone this year at Christmas? Because you know, God does say, you shall receive power and ye shall be witnesses unto me unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You know, every gift that will be given by anyone to anyone, I'll be very literal and say that within 30 days it will be all forgotten and it's not going to change anybody's life. But if you tell someone about Christ and they receive Him, You've changed a life forever. Amen. When Philip went to Samaria to preach and many people got saved, it says there was great joy in that city. Amen. Think about that. We do not celebrate as the world celebrates. We celebrate as Christians. We celebrate with conviction. We celebrate by living godly lives. 
And we celebrate by letting our light shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5, 2 says, Christ has also loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor or aroma. May God add his blessing to this really very simple, very plain, very easy to understand, very straightforward message to help us live as Christians ought to live this week. And may the joy of the Lord be your comfort and stay this week. And may that then radiate out of your lives to the lives of others. May the Lord bless you. Would you stand please? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Our precious Father, we bow before your throne this morning and we renew our vows to you, our Lord, that we made some of us a long time ago. I remind us all that we're believers. Our life should reflect that. Our church should reflect that. Our church, our lives, our families are all about Christ, the hope of the world, without whom multitudes are dying and slipping into the lake of fire. Multitudes are living without hope. Multitudes are hurting. Multitudes are in the throes and consequences of a sinful lifestyle. What appears on the surface as much entertainment and fun and men having a good time is really just a cover for the deep consequences and scars of sin. And they don't have the answer. Lord, we do. Help us, anoint us, empower us. May the Spirit of God strengthen us to be a witness for Christ. Lord, may your grace, your mercy, your peace, your loving kindness and strength be the portion of every person in this building today. If there are those who need Christ, may this be the hour that they bow and yield and submit to Christ. If there are those who need to renew their vows of Christian living, may they do that today. And may our lives be glory to you, I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. We're going to sing number 145. 125. 125. 